Hello, this is going to provide you with a brief summary of the Access POS software in regards to the POS screen. Up in the top left hand corner we've got the sales grid. Uh, this is where you'll see all each item as it's rung up uh, displayed in this area here. On the top right we've got the total of the sale as it progresses as well as an order number and also loyalty card details if you're running that as an option to the software. Uh, just underneath that it keeps, keeps the totals of the last transaction. That's particularly handy if we're running multiple operators using the, the point of sale terminal. Um, so the, the one operator can see the change in tender details of the last customer whilst another operator starts ringing up sales. On the bottom left hand corner uh, we've got where we can preset all our items on the touch screen. We can either have individual items preset or we can have buttons which take us to another level. So for example in this case I'm going to press the crumb bytes and it's just going to ring up an individual item. Uh, if I want extras I can press the extras button and that's going to take me to another level where I can then choose an extra. So in this case I'll use touch the fish cake. Uh, on the bottom right hand corner we've got preset tender keys. That's particularly handy for um, well, for fast change calculation if the customer tenders you an exact note or we can enter the amount tendered in this area here and then press the cash total button. Uh, we've got other payments for FPOS transactions, credit card transactions. We've got an account button for the few retail stores these days that still run customer accounts. We can press that and charge the sale to a customer's account. Um, we've got other functions functions 2, functions 3 panel which we'll come back to shortly. Uh, let's go back to functions 1. In this case I've rung up this sale, there's two items here, there's $11 and I'm going to touch the $20 note key. So it's completed the transaction and it's displayed the change. Tended amount was $20, sale 11 and then the change $9. Uh, let's show you a few other functions. I'm going to ring up another sale here, we'll go a small salad a large salad and also I'm going to scan, you can't see this, but I'm going to scan a can of Coca-Cola. So I'll scan that, you might be able to hear it. Um, in this case I'm going to use the hold recall function. So I'm going to touch the hold recall. Now what that does is that holds back that customer allowing the operator to serve another customer or as many other customers as you like. Um, so when that other customer then finally comes back I can recall that transaction by pressing that and then all the items appear and then I can continue on with the sale. Um, so in this case I'm going to ring up another item and I'm just going to press the cash button straight away and that will complete the sale. Um, let's show you an FPOS transaction. I'm going to ring up a few items here. We might go chicken and we're going to go chicken chips 5 and I'm going to hit other payments. When I press other payments key I can come up with all my other tender options. Say cash, visa, mastercard etc. In this case I'm going to hit mastercard on the touch screen tells me that the amount total is 2350 by MasterCard and if I simply press enter that will complete the transaction with MasterCard. Now we can have split tendering whereby the customer may pay a portion in cash, a portion in credit card. We can also have it whereby we link the terminal to an FPOS machine so um, the total automatically goes into the FPOS machine and all that's automated. Um, some other functions here, receipt, that enables you to produce a receipt after the transaction. So I'll press receipt. In this case I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Obviously it would normally print on the printer. So you can see what a typical receipt looks like with the, your business name and details here on the top and then the details of the, of the transaction. Let's close that now. Having a quick look at functions 2. Functions 2 is an area where we just have various function keys. For example, um, find item, rarely really need to use that. If I touch that I can then search for an item in the database but normally we're either scanning the item or we're using the touch screen panel so it's fairly rare to have to use that. Um, inquire, that's used for account customers so if we need to make payments off their account, print statements etc we can press inquire, look up the particular customer uh, and then we've got various options here but once again it's most probably a fairly rare rare case these days in retail stores. Item discount, sale discount, item minus. Uh, with all these types of function keys we do not need 
to a keyboard or a mouse. In this case, if I want to ring up a sale and if I want 10% discount, I hit item discount and then I can either use the preset rates which I have along here, otherwise I can manually enter the rate that I wanted. In this case, I'll hit 10% and it will discount this item by 10%. One of the good parts features of this is that I could ring up multiple items and then on the touch screen I could touch a previously entered item then hit say item discount choose the rate and it will discount that item that I selected which wasn't the previous item the cash register can't normally do that um, now we've got sale discount which is obviously discounting the total of the sale we've got void item if I select an item I wish to void I can press void item Going back to functions 2, I've got void sale, cancels that or voids the total of all items. Refund, uh, that's refunding an item. I'll show you that separately a bit later. Now, selling prices. This system can have, can have now up to four selling prices. Um, now, in this case, I could select the sell price button, then select a particular sell price level. Now I can also choose whether it's for the next item only or this transaction or to stay on this price level. Um, where you commonly might use that for price level 1 might be a standard selling price, price level 2 might be a wholesale price level or a, yeah, a loyalty price level, something like that. Okay. Uh, receipt, toggling the receipt on and off, no sale, opening up the cash drawer, uh, loyalty, redeem, that's if you were using the loyalty system, redeeming discounts cash float, entering a float at the start of the day, expense payout where we might be paying out miscellaneous payments, say the window cleaner or just other miscellaneous cash payments out of the drawer. Item overrides quite a handy one at times. Uh, just say I ring up a large chips and for some reason I want to um, oh, well, change the description or change the price. I can select item override and I can either override the price or I can override the description for some reason if I wanted to change the description on it. In this case, just for this example, I'm going to go $2 and I'll hit enter and it's just overridden the price to $2 but I could have changed the description. Um, that, by the way, that description you change will only appear on the customer's receipt. It won't go into the database or change the item's uh, standard description. Um, okay, over on this side here we've got sort of um, it's COD payment area okay, for white good providers. Um, that's whereby a customer can come into the store. Um, they might order a fridge, for example. They might pay a deposit. Um, you might go out and deliver it and then collect the money at the person's premises on delivery and come back and, and make payment through the POS system. So it's a specialised feature um, for that. Those four buttons all uh, are part of that feature. Uh, functions 3 tab, this is where we have um, a couple of further function type keys, most probably not as common, um, although end of day reports obviously is a common one. Uh, this is where we're going to do our end of day reports. Um, I could select that and then normally at the end of the day I'm going to select Z and then print by default and then press process and that will then generate the end of day report printed out of the POS printer. Another handy feature with this is we can also have it emailing the report to you automatically. Uh, you could either enter in an email address here and then just as a manual ad hoc type situation and then process and it'll email it to you. Otherwise in other parts of the software we can preset the email address so it automatically will do it. Uh, we can also do that on X reports. X report is doing a report but not clearing the daily totals out of the POS system. There's also areas here where we can select what parts of or what information or what reports I want included on the end of day report. Um, by as default, we've got those ticked. Let's go back to our functions three. Uh, common another common sort of function key trail. Uh, if I select trail, basically this is an audit trail of every transaction that's done in this case for today as we've selected up here. So I could then select a particular transaction in this grid here and I can see the detail of it here. Um, I can then reprint that receipt or I could email that receipt. Um, I can not, not do that for yesterday or I, I can do it for any, any date I desire. Um, so that's quite a handy, res handy feature. Exit out of close here. Uh, lay by, it's an optional software module if you're using the lay by functionality. That's a, 
uh, go, th go that in another video. Uh, stock status, um, that's just, I could scan an item and we can then just see the status of that item, in this case it's the Coke can and we can have a look on stock on hand, in this case minus one because I haven't received any stock it says the last sale, just a bit of various information on this particular product uh, just, well that much sure deals with most of the common function keys uh, log off, we can actually have on this system unlimited number of operators uh, so with each with their own access level. So what that means is I can set up the POS screen so you must log in with your operator ID number for every transaction and we can also have different levels of authority that control various function keys. Uh, I haven't shown you that today but it can certainly do that. Uh, we can have also um, sensitive function keys like void and refund and discounts. We can also have uh, an email notification to the owner of the business or manager so if any employee say did a refund or a void an email would automatically go out of the system warning the operator or warning the manager should I say um, that that function is being used um, I'm just going to finish off the sale here pressing cash and that completes the uh, end of our pause training thank you